up in the front corner of the classroom by my office, we keep all of our sheet and wire supplies. Now I supply all the wire and sheet you're going to need for the class, unless you're going to need something more on the precious side, like some silver or gold, which I don't usually recommend beginners do anyway, unless you've got a project that really warrants it. Uh, scrap bins are in the corner um, for copper, brass, titanium, steel, aluminum, and nickel. And then in the drawers below, we've got the sheet sorted out by stainless steel, brass, copper, and then aluminum, mild steel, and tubing. Above the shelf, we've got brass and copper wire on spools for the fine stuff, fine meaning the thinnest gauge stuff. And then for the thicker wire, we have coils in the blue bins. Top bin has all the different gauges of the titanium wire. This is a sheet and wire gauge. It's also called an American standard gauge, or sometimes you'll see them marked as brown and sharp gauges. It has numbered slots that you use to measure the thickness of the sheet or wire and you use it just by poking it into the slots until you find one that it won't go into. Right, so as I worked down it felt easy to go slide into the other slots until I got down to 22 and then it would just barely wiggle in there. Alright, that's a good indication it's a 22 gauge sheet. And if I wiggle it back out of there, and try going into the 23 gauge slot, it won't go in at all. all right, so I know for certain that that's a 22 gauge sheet. When you're measuring wire, you measure it the exact same way. You use the slots. You never are going to use the holes in the gauge for anything. They're just there to keep you from getting stuck in the slot. All right, because it really doesn't make sense that you'd have the same number referring to this big hole and this skinny slot. When you go to take a piece of wire off of one of the spools, pull out what you need and then bend it downward before you clip it so that it can't come back and wrap back around the spool. When you're taking a piece of wire off of one of the coils, don't just grab the end of the wire and pull, because you won't be able to get much wire off the coil that way anyway, because of the way it's bundled. It's better to find the loose end and push it out from under the tie, and if you need more than that, just keep pushing it out from underneath the ties until you have the length of wire you need. Clip it and bend it outward again like we did with the when we were taking the wire off the spool bend it outward a little bit so that it can't get lost inside the coil sheet supplies are sorted into the drawers by type and by gauge in addition to whole 12 by 12 sheets these drawers also contain smaller pieces and remnants from previous projects be very conservative with the metal whenever possible try to find a piece that's already about the size or shape you need rather than cutting it from a larger piece also, return your remnants to the correct drawer. We don't throw any metal away if we can avoid it. Because metal is very, very recyclable, as you know. And you want to get out of the habit of thinking of large pieces of metal as scrap. Now, this may not seem like a large piece of metal to you, but in jewelry terms, this is a very large piece of metal. This is enough to make several projects out of. And certainly if this was a piece of gold instead of a piece of yellow brass, if you saw this laying around, you'd think, wow, that's a lot of gold. But people see this and they think, brass, that's ah, just cheap. And they just chuck it in the bin as if this was the garbage bin. This is not the garbage bin. This is the scrap bin. And this also, because of the regular shape, people think it's scrap. But for me, and that's partly it's a, it's a problem of, of nomenclature, because Scrap implies that it's all used up. Scrap implies that it has no more value. 
And that's really the only thing that should be going into this bin, is stuff that is so irregularly shaped or has so little usable surface that, or maybe it's very heavily textured or shaped, that it's really not going to be useful for somebody else to make something out of. Then it goes in the bin. And even then, this can be a really good place to find small pieces that, that are good for what you're trying to make, instead of cutting a little piece off of a, a bigger piece of sheet. Something this size really ought to have been put back into the supply drawer. And a lot of times people just chuck things into the scrap bins because they don't know what thickness that sheet is and they don't want to take the trouble to use the gauge that's usually chained up right next to the scrap bin to gauge it and put it back in the appropriate drawer. Don't do that. People think that just because something's recyclable that somehow if we recycle it there's not an environmental cost to that material in the same way that there would be if we just threw it in the trash. So there's still a very very high environmental cost to recycling scrap. You always lose some material in the process and the process of recycling scrap in a new material is very energy intensive and usually uses some, some very toxic problematic chemicals in the process as well. So just because we can retain these scraps or reuse them doesn't mean that the best reuse of them isn't to dig around in there and find a piece that you could make use of instead of cutting it off of a fresh sheet of metal. Of the words reduce, reuse, and recycle, the best ones in our shop are the first two.